Hello and welcome to this A3 tutorial on the equivalent circuit for a DC machine. In order to understand how a DC machine works, a lot of people go straight to the analysis and they don't understand how that equivalent circuit is derived. Once that equivalent circuit's understood, uh, then it, everything else becomes much easier. So today we're just going to start the very basics and build an equivalent circuit and I'll be doing other A3 tutorials on other aspects of the DC machine. So here's a DC machine that one of my students has built. Uh, I've chosen this one because it shows it very well as what's going on. Here we've got uh, two lots of field windings. Uh, here's a set of field windings here and here's another set here and in here we have our armature windings and they're spinning around like this. So if we go back to the, the the basic idea that most of you are aware of, we can start with a, a field here like this, which is set up as a, as a permanent magnet or a, an electromagnet, and this is often considered, we can make this one a north, and we can make another one over here, like this, and we can make this one a south. And in, in here we have our armature, which will be doing our rotating, rotating configure it like that. That's stuck on a, uh, an axis about here and this is also a, a magnet and that will be a north and a south there and you'll understand from high school physics the north and the north they repel each other, the north and the south they attract, the south and the south they repel, the north and south they attract. So with this point as a central point of axis we'll end up with our armature rotating around in that direction there like that. So that's what's happening from an electrical point of view. This continues to ro this electromagnet continues to rotate inside this field. As it goes around through the trick of commutation, the coils that exist on our armature are reconfigured. So this is the electrical state of what things are happening. Um, so here we've got a series of coils. Here we have the basic idea of the motor. How, the, how this is done is usually this is made out of laminated steel. We've got a whole lot of coils around here and that creates an electromagnet. Another set of coils around here that creates an electromagnet and a set of coils around here and that creates an electromagnet. And these are usually connected up to a DC source here. a DC source here and that's how it's done. To take this or this and move that into an equivalent circuit what we can see is we basically have coils. So if we take our field for example we've got a wire coming in we've got a large coil of wire we know wire has a resistance and being a coil it has an inductance. So that is our field. This is supplied with our field voltage. A current will be drawn through here, our field current, through the impedance of our field. There. Our armature, which in this one here I've got configured uh, from a separate source, and we'll be going on to how we energize these. We can connect them as separately excited, or we can connect them in series, or we can connect them in shunt. We'll talk about that in another tutorial. But our armature is also a coil of wire and, as previously, our wire has a resistance, it has an inductance. Now, there's one more thing that goes on inside the armature that we need to consider here. And that is, whilst this is an created as an electromagnet which is spinning inside this field, it is also a wire that is being moved inside this field. Now, that's a seems fairly obvious, but you know from high school magnetism that when you pass a wire through a magnetic field, you also generate a voltage. So our armature that's turning in here is not just a, a magnet that's being spun inside this magnetic field, but it's also a wire that's been spun inside that magnetic field. And as I just said, that wire creates a voltage. And what happens is we actually create a, quite a significant voltage actually. 
And this is represented in our equivalent circuit by drawing our armature like this, which generates a back EMF here called E. So this is the basic circuit of a DC machine, but it gets even simpler than that. And this is the beauty of DC machines when it comes to understanding what's going on. We just recap, over here is our field, our field resistance, RF, our field uh, inductance, LF, our armature, we've got an armature resistance, and we've got an, an armature inductance, and the back EMF. And those are the voltages and currents. It's a very simple series circuit as each of these are considered. Now, the impedance in here, as you know, an impedance is R plus JXL, which equals R plus J 2 pi FL. This is a DC circuit. The value of 2, so to understand the impedance, the resistance doesn't change with the DC circuit. The inductance, this is, gets interesting, well, it's fairly straightforward, but it's a bit of an eyebrow raise when you first understand it. 2 doesn't change, pi doesn't change, the inductance doesn't change, but the frequency, it's a DC circuit. The frequency of the DC circuit is zero. So that term goes to zero. Zero times inductance times two times pi means that entire term goes to zero. The impedance is simply the resistance. So from uh, understanding what's going on, we don't have to worry about our inductances. Our circuit resolves down to our field resistance and our armature resistance and the back EMF that we're generating. Field, 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 armature resistance, armature current, Armature voltage. That is all that is needed to know to understand how a DC machine works. We'll, in my other, as I said before, in another tutorial, we'll go on and to look at the different configurations here. But that's all it is. Here's your armature. Here's your field. As I said, the frequency is zero. So all the inductive component goes to zero. That's all we need to know. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep an eye out for my next videos on these DC machines. And I hope you have a good day.